Hey y'all, it's Alex from You Should Craft, and today I'll show you how to crochet a double crochet border around your work. So this is an easy way to finish off a project, to clean up some of those like wobbly edges, and to just make things look a little bit more professional, or it can also give you a starting stitch if you're looking for a more complicated border, like if you want to add, I don't know, shell stitches or something with ribbing. So in this tutorial, I'll show you how to add the border to a simple dishcloth, but you could easily adapt this technique for like blankets or anything else that needs a border around the edges. So materials wise, you can use whatever. Um, I just crocheted, I crocheted a square. This is 24 stitches in 12 rows. You could easily, if you're just practicing, do like something even teeny tiny. This is eight stitches in four rows. Or if you already have a blanket that needs a border, then, or a, you know, anything that needs a border, then you can go ahead and get started. Um, you're just gonna start in the corner of the last stitch. So I've put a stitch marker here to mark off my last stitch in this dishcloth so that I'm all lined up and ready to add my double crochet border around all four sides. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using a darker thread today, or a darker yarn, just so that there's more contrast so you can easily see the border, but you could totally just continue crocheting in whatever color your blanket or dishcloth was, and then just turn to finish off and like begin your border. But so here I'm joining my new yarn. So my last double crochet, I haven't finished that final yarn over. You could use the same technique with any stitch though. So just waiting to finish off to do the color change. So I'm just going to yarn over and pull through with that new color so that I finish off the last stitch in my last row of the body portion. And now I'm going to turn my work 45 degrees so that I'm crocheting across the side. Um, for double crochet stitches, I like to begin with a chainless starting stitch. So I'll insert my hook and I'm going around the whole post of this stitch. So in the gap between the first and or the last and second to last stitches. So I'm inserting my hook just like this. And then I'm going to single crochet. And now I have my single crochet and I'm going to insert my hook into the like leg of the single crochet stitch. And I'm basically going to single crochet on top of the single crochet stitch that I already have. And that'll give me something that's the height of a double crochet, but that didn't require any chains to get going. So now I've got one double crochet, but I want to do two. So I'm just doing a second double crochet stitch. And basically in every double crochet along this edge, I'm gonna put two stitches because double crochets are long. So for a single crochet, you would just put one in your border but we're gonna do two stitches across each of these. And again, I'm going around the whole stitch. Oops, I'm accidentally doing a third, and that would be too many. If you put too many stitches, you'll end up with a ruffly edge, which if you wanted a ruffly border might be good for you, but I don't. I want a straight border. So I'll move on to my next double crochet from the last part of the project, and I'm gonna do two double crochets totally around this whole post. And this will give me a cleaner edge versus if I was trying to like just find a spot inside of the stitch because I wouldn't necessarily 
be in the same spot for every stitch across. And that could look kind of wonky. So I'm about halfway done and I'm just finishing up putting, oops, putting two double crochets in each of these edge stitches in the body of my project. Oop, I've got this like big yarn barf coming up. <laughs> So I'm almost to the corner, which is the, I mean, I, it's not hard, but it's like the only thing that you really need to remember. Other than that, there's two stitches on each like horizontal double crochet. So here I'm going to still crochet into this gap between the first and second stitch, but now I'm going to do five. Um, that is one stitch because normally you would do two, three stitches for the corner, and one stitch for the very first stitch of the next side. So it's a little bit weird to crochet, I guess, um, just because you need to remember that you're putting these five in the corner space, but it's still just like three. It's just that some of those other stitches are from like, it's also the, <laughs> the last stitch of this side and the first stitch of this next side that we're about to start. All right, so here's four in my corner. And here is five in my corner. So now I will skip this first stitch because like I said, we've already done that. It's right here. So it's already part of our corner, but I will just double crochet along here. For me, these are, it's the bottom of my turning chain or like of my starting chain. So I'm just crocheting into both loops along the that starting chain. This is the bottom of my project. So I'm just continuing to double crochet. I'm just putting one double crochet in every stitch down this row. So this side, the, for the top and the bottom side, these are the easiest sides because you're basically just doing normal double crochets. You might have to wiggle to get your stitch in here since it's the, the bottom of your work. And if you use the same size hook when you did your starting chain, then it might just be a little bit tight. It's not a big deal though once you get those stitches in. So I'm at my last stitch of this side. So again, I'm gonna put five stitches into this gap right here. That will be one stitch for the end of this row, three stitches for the corner, and one stitch for the beginning of the next row, or side of my border.
So there's my five. So for this next side, you're just going to continue to put two stitches in every double crochet along the edge. So go ahead and work on that and I will catch back up with you when you're done so that we can do the very last side together. Okay, so I've finished my third side and now I'm at the corner. So just like before, I'm gonna crochet five stitches into this hole, like between the first and second double crochets. So here's five, and now you'll just double crochet in every stitch along the top of your project. This is the fourth and final side of your border. All right, so I'm back at my last corner. This is where I started. And if you remember, we already put two double crochets here. So to get to that five that we've been putting in every corner, we need three more stitches just to finish this off. Here is our third and final double crochet in our double crochet border. Um, we will need to close this up though. But we've done every side, all four corners of our double crochet border. So I'm going to use my tiny scissors to just trim my yarn, leaving a six to eight inch tail. And with my hook, I'll pull that last piece of yarn all the way through that last stitch and then join my needle. We're gonna do an invisible join. So putting the yarn through the eye of the needle and with an invisible join, you're going to replicate this top V of the very first stitch that we did in our border. So to do that, you're gonna insert your hook into the next stitch. This is the second stitch and I've got my needle through there and I'm just basically making a new V on top of the old V. So I'm putting my needle now into the top of the stitch I ended with and I just wove it through that whole stitch but you don't have to do that yet if you don't want to and pull it through pretty gently because you want to make sure that the tension in that V that you're creating matches the rest of your project so that that new like top of a stitch that you just made blends in with everything because that's how it's invisible is you're basically just making a new top of a stitch. So that looks pretty good. So that means that I'm good to weave in my ends. And that means that we are done with our double crochet border. So let me know in the comments below what you're going to use this crochet border for. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to the You Should Craft channel and check out the You Should Craft blog for more free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials. But on this, just weave in your ends, trim your yarn, and you are good to go.